test, test, test. So yeah, looks like I'm good. Okay. I'm Phil Wyman, and this is the Wild Theology Podcast, where the world, the humans in it, and God are all wilder than we've been told. That's your intro. So, you'll get philosophy and theology and crazy stories that come from 30 years of pastoring. Boring. 20 years of festival work. Whatever. And the uh, mud and blood of wrestling with the living in the spaces angels fear to tread. Ooh, trying to sound interesting, are we? <laughs> so, yeah, you think you got something to say? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the problem, Dimwit. Like I'm a lot smarter than you think. Yeah, you tied your shoes this morning. Whatever. We are Phil Wyman, and this is Wild Theology, where you get to argue with your own ideas. And lose. That's the point. In this podcast, I'm going to talk a little bit about the fact that God can be found in the festivals in our world. This is something that a lot of people don't believe because the festivals are wild and crazy places. It was 2011, and I was at my second Burning Man event. Burning Man is a wild, hedonistic, artistic festival in the Nevada desert, about two and a half hours northeast of Reno. And for my second Burning Man, I took on what for me was a rather tall, project and that was to build an art installation. It's called the Pillars of the Saints. Myself and four hard-working, crazy and talented friends went out to the desert to Burning Man and we built three 15-foot tall pillars that we asked people to sit on top of. They were called the Pillars of the Saints and the object was to hear a voice. We told people to behave like the 6th century Syrian monk by the name of Simeon Stylites, who sat on a pillar for 39 years. And we told them, go up, meditate, and don't come down till you hear a voice. Turned out to be a fantastic project where God met people on top of those pillars. But during the week, I was looking out across the desert, and I saw Jesus walking with a cross carrying it across the desert. So I shouted out to Hope and Dennis, and I said, hey, look, there's Jesus, let's go get a picture of him. And so I started to walk out into the desert, and Jesus turned and walked away from us. So I beat feet and made it out there as quickly as I could, left the others behind, and when I got to Jesus, I I told him a little lie. I said, my name's Simeon and the Romans sent me to carry your cross. Now I figured that he would know the illustration from scripture. He, Jesus has to know the Bible, right? And uh, so he looked at me and he said, um, it's heavy, are you sure? I said, oh yeah, I'll carry it. So I was carrying the cross and talking and walking with Jesus. And I, of course, confessed my sin. I said, my name's not really Simeon. My name's Phil. And um, I built an art installation with my friends, and we'd love to show it to you. And so now Jesus turns, and he looks to me, and he pulls down his sunglasses. And he looks in my eyes, and a little tear came out of his eye. And he says, you're not Phil Wyman are you? Well, I had only told him my first name, so now I was a little bit dumbfounded that Jesus knew my last name, but I guess that's kind of a Jesus thing. And I said, uh, yeah. And he said, I've been lost, and I was looking for you. And I thought, oh my gosh. Okay, this is backwards. Jesus is lost, and I just found him. Well, I guess just about anything can happen at Burning Man. Now, there's a moral to this story, and it's this. Even though it wasn't the real Jesus, it was a man named Bert Flaming, who's a bookseller from Canada. God is in the festivals before we are. And the story about Jesus being lost and looking for me, I think is exactly what's happening 
all across our world and all the festivals that are there. God is in the festivals before we are. And in fact, he's looking for us to arrive there and to express his love. In a sense, Jesus is lost in the festivals and hoping that we'll arrive and work with him there. Now, one anecdote does not make a theology. And my little story about finding Jesus at the Burning Man Festival does not give me an anthropological missiology that teaches me how to engage the world. But this story does highlight things that we can find in scripture. Things that tell us how to engage our world and what we can expect when we do engage the world. The first thing this story highlights is the omnipresence of God. He can be found everywhere including hedonistic festivals like Burning Man. The 139th Psalm tells us, or is being asked these words, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. So whether a place is holy or unholy doesn't determine whether God is there or not. So in the festivals, we can assume that God is already there before we arrive. Now, some people would say that just because God is everywhere, that that does not give me the right to walk into the, quote, dens of iniquity in our world. But if I read my Bible correctly, at the end of each gospel, we're given a command to, as it says in Mark, quote, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, unquote. Now, in this sense, I'm not sure that God is asking me to go into festivals. I think he's commanding me. So we already know these two things. One, God is everywhere. And two, he's commanding his church to go everywhere. A number of years ago, I took a small team from our church in Salem, Massachusetts, to the UK to do some outreach. One of the events we went to was a Druid festival near the Forest of Dean on the Welsh border. While we were there, we met a young woman who had once been a Christian but now was a practicing Druid and when she found out that we were Christians she said to me what are you doing here Christians aren't supposed to come to events like this and I asked her do you think Jesus would come to an event like this and she responded and said well yeah Jesus would come here but Christians aren't supposed to come here and I stared at her didn't say a word and pretty soon both of us laughed very loudly the point had made itself without me saying anything by the end of the festival she was thanking us for being there and for showing her that there was a different kind of Christianity than that which she had previously known this story from the Druid festival as well as the anecdote about finding Jesus at Burning Man highlight a third point and that is that our ministry must always be incarnational. The incarnation was Christ, God himself, coming as man and living among us. For us to be incarnational means that despite the fact that we are Christians we must embed ourselves in places where we don't expect Christianity. Just as God came to a sinful world, we stand in places that we're not expected to stand in. And that was exactly what the young woman at the Druid Festival was saying. She saw us as an unexpected invasion into her world. Unfortunately, Christianity often appears as an unwanted 
and negative invasion as opposed to a positive transforming influence. And incarnational ministry is exactly what causes us to behave in ways that people identify with and desire to have around. By being incarnational, just as God became man, I become a festival goer. I become a burner at Burning Man. This doesn't mean that I participate in sinful activities that I should not participate in, just as Jesus did not participate in sin despite the fact he walked among sinners and loved them and played with them and laughed with them and worked with them. The same is expected from me and that is incarnational ministry. Now, I'm not about to suppose that every Christian should be going the places that I go or doing the things that I'm doing. In fact, there are some people who should not because there are things going on in the festival world that are temptations for those who may not be able to handle the temptations. I have seen Christians get blind drunk or take illegal drugs or participate in immorality. I have seen families broken up because those who were, quote, ministering in the festivals, unquote, were actually there for their own personal desires. But these failings do not change the fact that God is calling the church to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And so though it may not be for everyone, there are people who should be there. Unfortunately, Christians have gone to these places and at times have done things that have given a bad name to the church and have pushed people further away from God rather than drawn him closer. But we'll be talking about how to engage the festivals in a transforming way in some future podcasts. As for now, I want to put out the call. I am looking for a million people to join me in the festivals, bringing the transforming love of Christ. Why a million people? Because there are a million festivals out there and hundreds of millions of people attending them. And as we've already learned, God is already in the festivals and waiting for us. Thank you to David Gerard for his ambient music. What you heard today was 1248 AM Black Rock, and you can find more of his music at bandcamp.ambientism.com. If you'd like to support this project, you can do so here on Patreon for as little as $1 a release, and at the most, that's $4 a month. Why on earth would anybody want to support us? Well, I think we're pretty cool, and maybe some people believe in what we're doing. Oh, come on, you believe that? Hmm, yeah. Don't you ever think you're just a little too weird for the average person? Um, yeah, sometimes. <laughs>